Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be learning the Borrelius species. We have seen the uh, effect and uh, the properties of different type of spirochetes. And now we'll be talking about Borrelius species, which is one of the spirochetes. And we'll be learning their general properties, their physical characteristics, and especially the infection caused by Borrelius species. Okay, so let's begin. So in the first place, we'll be talking about the physiology and structure of Borrelia. But before going into that, you should know the basic structure of spirochete family. Now what we know about the spirochete family, so let me take a color here. Okay. Now what we know about the spirochete family is that spirochetes are a kind of a obligatory intracellular parasite. So they definitely require a host cell for the completion of their life cycle because they require some important chemical components and metabolic pathway products for their own growth and development. So for that reason, they need to uh, be stored inside and Borrelia are a kind of very long among all the different spirochetes like uh, Leptospira and Triponema all of them Borrelia is a kind of long they are a kind of long so the, the length of Borrelia is kind of very large and they are having a similar structure like 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 this like this kind of curved structure so they will be having this kind of curved structure and obviously they are having a outer membrane uh, so they mu much more they more behave like a gram negative bacteria they behave like gram negative bacteria they are having very thin cell wall very thin peptidoglycan wall and obviously they are having some external uh, membrane which is a typical characteristic of gram negative bacteria right and uh, what they are having in this picture we can see they are kind of spiral in shape and structure like right and why they are kind of spiral because what they are having in, in, in a very important uh, thing about them is that they are having uh, what we call as the extracellular so so sorry intracellular flagella so they are having intracellular intracellular flagella and we also call this flagella as endoflagella endoflagella or else we can also call them as axial filament axial filament so that's something new about all of this spirochete family now among uh, so these are the characteristic of all the spirochete family uh, organism but especially borrelia is a long organism and it is having kind of much more carved and spiral uh, region in them right now we cannot stain them or uh, they usually is not uh, better visualized under light microscopy as you can see in this picture we can see them in under light microscopy they will more look like warm but uh, if we uh, visualize them using phase contrast, so this is a visualization where, where it's gone. This is the visualization. So let me. Yeah, okay. Now here you can see the visualization in phase contrast. This is a video of phase contrast microscopy. But in phase, phase contrast microscopy, you can visualize them better. Right. And also in dark field microscopy, you can also also visualize them. Okay. Now, uh, usually there are different type of species of Borrelia are available. Uh, majorly three different type of species which are uh, clinically significant for human being because all these three type of uh, species are causing uh, human infections, right? Uh, one of them is causing the epidemic relapsing fever. One of them is causing the endemic relapsing fever. Another one is, is causing completely different kind of disease, which is the Lyme disease. So if you're thinking about the disease, they can cause either relapsing fever or Lyme disease. So one, uh, two type of species are cause, causing relapse, relaxing fever. One is causing the epidemic of the relapsing fever. Another one is causing the endemic of relaxing fever. But another one is completely different causing Lyme disease, right? Now the Lyme disease causing Bor Borrelia is called Borrelia burgdorferi. And the in epidemic uh, relapsing fever causing agent is called Borrelia recurrentis. And endemic relapsing fever causing agent is Borrelia species. Many different Borrelia species, they are causing relapsing fever. So relapsing fever is a kind of very common infection caused by Borrelia, right? Now usually if you look at their measurements, they measure in 0 0.2 into 0 0.5. This is uh, to 30 micrometer in length. So what usually you know about other type of uh, spirochetes, they usually length from 10 to 15 micrometer at least uh, at most right but in this case you can see they can long enough up to 30 micrometer in length so they are pretty long so that's a uh, uniqueness about the Borrelia we can stain them using GM sustaining and it is pretty common to all other 
member of the spirochid family okay and they can grow in culture but bacteria are micro aerophilic in nature and have complex nutrient uh, nutritional requirements so they won't grow in our basic general medium so we need to pr prepare specific medium for their growth right so these are the basic uh, part about the uh, physiology and structure if you want to uh, learn more about the spirochid physiology spirochid structure you can go back to my youtube video about the spirochid introduction you will find it there now let's come to the virulence factor by borrelia species now borrelia is responsible borrelia is not having that kind of dangerous uh, thing like uh, they are also sometimes they are having uh, endotoxin so this is common they are having small amount of endotoxin but this is not uh, the major thing for them the major thing for borrelia virulence is that they can have they can undergo antigenic shift that's very very dangerous as they can go antigenic shift uh, as a result of that they can escape the immune system right so the immune clear clearance pathway that is the general pathway inside the cell to kill infective bacteria uh, will not will uh, will not be able to do something or not be able to kill uh, this kind of bacteria because they can escape this okay and also the immune reactivity against the lyme disease agents may be responsible for the clinical disease we don't need to talk about that but this is very important that they are kind of undergo antigenic shift that's making them dangerous 